Hello again and welcome back to Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose. My name is Monica Pitts and today I am going to share with you a special interview that I did with Unchained Melodies Dog Rescue. Now this is a group that participated in Como Gives, which is my community's local year-end giving campaign and it's powered by the Community Foundation of Central Missouri. And the marketing for that campaign is done by MayCreate, my company, and we also help and create the website for it. So I keep a pretty close eye on my participants and this organization did some crazy peer-to-peer work. They were very focused on their peer-to-peer campaigns. One of my nonprofit marketing with purpose Facebook group participants called them the queen of peer-to-peer this year, which is awesome because they definitely float to the top for that one. Now, for those of you who are new to that term, peer-to-peer means that your volunteers are campaigning on your behalf. So this alleviates some of the heavy lifting for the organization and it helps you meet new people. And we've done peer-to-peer fundraising in the nonprofit world for a really long time. We just maybe didn't call it that. So for example, if you do a gala, and you have a volunteer or a supporter of your organization that invites a bunch of other people to come to the table that they purchased, that's pretty much a peer-to-peer fundraiser. Or if you did a 5K and somebody raised money before they ran the 5K, that's also a peer-to-peer fundraiser. So it's not a new concept, it can just be kind of a new name. Now we introduced it to the Como Gives campaign because a few years ago I called around to a bunch of other like super big giving day and giving week campaigns throughout the U.S. and they very generously gave me their time and answered my questions and I asked them you know what is it that we need to do to really bring us to the next level and help our organizations raise more money through this campaign and they said peer-to-peer. So we went to the drawing board and figured out how to incorporate it in the website, how to get the participants on board to do it and this year it just really took off but throughout our training I know so many people had questions about peer-to-peer that I had to bring them in to talk about it okay so I'm going to stop talking in just a second so you can get to the interview but I just wanted to tell you some of the ideas that their volunteers brought to the table for these peer-to-peers because they don't list them all off in the interview but I just think they're so clever that I have to tell you them. So they had custom door decorations. They had the ability to name the first puppy of the 2021 litter. They had bow ties, puppy bow ties, custom pet stickers, sparkly wine bottle lights, dunk the director in a dunk tank. They had a matching funds campaign, custom shirts, handmade glass stars, holiday sugar and ginger cookies, gooey butter cookies, pet portraits, peanut butter, pumpkin, bacon, dog treats. So those, I mean, they basically ran a holiday gift shop out of the Como Gives peer-to-peer feature. It was so cool. Okay, so without further ado, I am going to introduce you to Melody and Kat so you can hear how they asked their volunteers to do peer-to-peer campaigns, what they did to manage them and support them to make sure that the campaigns turn out successfully, and last but not least, plans for next year and how they're going to make it even more successful. So let's get to business. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting and get moving towards marketing with purpose. So just one thing before we get started, Charlie is a rescue dog. He's hanging out with Melody in her lap. 
She's actually like hanging out with him in his dog bed for the interview because he's a big guy. He's a yellow lab and he's 12 years old and he's super chill and really, really sweet. And so when we talk about Charlie, we are talking about Charlie the dog since you can't see the video right now. Okay, so now seriously, let's get to that interview. We are going to talk about the awesome peer-to-peer -peer success that um, Unchained Melodies had this year over the month of December through Como Gives. So let's start out by having um, Melody, you and Kat introduce yourselves and Charlie, of course, and tell us about your organization. Uh, I'm Melody Whitworth and I'm the director of Unchained Melodies Dog Rescue. Uh, this is Charlie. Uh, he was one of the photos on the slide presentation on our homepage through uh, Gives. Uh, he was one of our success stories, one of our rescue dogs. Um, he was left abandoned on a property with 30 cats. We were contacted by an animal control officer here in mid-Missouri. Uh, we went out and found him. He was um, just hunkered down in a dilapidated barn and he was skin and bones, pretty much hairless, had a lot of health issues. Um, he still has chronic ear infections and um, skin issues, but we uh, rescued him and got him straight to the vet. Um, we then reached out to our friends at uh, Boone County Animal Care to help with the cats. And they literally rescued all 30 cats. It took them about two weeks, but after that time, um, the property was clean, all the animals were gone and they were all being cared for. So Charlie is still here with me. I foster him. Um, he's a senior guy. Um, he sleeps about 23 hours a day, <laughs> um, loves food. He was really lacking for food. So now he really likes his food. Um, and again, he's got some chronic health issues. So he'll probably just stay here with me. So I know that you guys rescue animals at Unchained Melodies. So tell me more about the types of animals that you serve and when you kind of intervene and come onto the scene. Like when would somebody call you? We're primarily an anti-chaining and penning organization and rescuing the abused and neglected dogs. Um, we're strictly a dog rescue, but of course, if there's other animals on the property, we reach out to other organizations or the authorities to help those particular animals. Um, people will reach out to us in many ways. Uh, we have a report a dog form on our website where people can report dogs that are chained out long term in inclement weather, you know, in the storms that we just recently had. Um, sometimes family members reach out to us to help the dogs. The dogs do have to be surrendered to us. Um, we can't just go and take a dog off a property. We have no legal authority to do so. We're strictly a volunteer rescue organization uh, here to be the voice of the voiceless, the dogs that are just chained and penned and neglected and abandoned with no one looking out for them. That is so sad. I have two dogs in my room with me right now. One of them who is looking at me because she knows she's making too much noise. <laughs> and the other one is taking a nap. So I absolutely love, love, love my dogs. I actually had, I had cats and I thought I was a cat person until I had a dog. Mm. And then I knew I was a dog person. <laughs> and there was like no yeah. going back for me. <laughs> um, so... You guys recently completed um, your participation in Como Gives, which is our community's year-end giving campaign. And this year, amazingly, like we exceeded our goals in a way that I can't even believe the generosity of the people in our community. Like our goal was to collectively among 142 nonprofits to raise a million dollars and we raised $1.6 million. So I'm like getting goosebumps right now. Incredible. And you guys had exceeded your goal also in the campaign. You finished 11th, which is a big deal out of 142 organizations. And you set a goal of $25,000 and you guys raised $33,705. So that is extremely commendable. You had to have worked like super duper hard. Tell me from the beginning, because I got to know these things as a marketer, like how did you guys decide how you were going to approach this year's campaign? Kat, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so I'm Kat. I was one of three people who were doing, uh, it was our peer-to-peer -peer team for Unchained. 
Um, and we really just wanted to tap into all our volunteers and get more people involved. Um, so we actually started talking about our peer to peers in July, July, yeah. August. Yeah. Um, and talking about how to, you know, work with other volunteers, coming up with ideas, promotions. Um, and that was when we initially started. And then with all the volunteers at Unchained, we started, um, you know, nudging people, talking to them about what they might want to do in August and September. Um, we had an official like Google form, but we saw the most success just through reaching out one-on-one -on -one with our most active volunteers and saying like, what do you love to do? You know, would you like to do that for our peer to peers and share that with the community? So we really, um, we were very lucky to have so many people do peer to peers this year for us. And a lot of them did things they love to do. So it was a really fun experience for everybody. So how many peer to peers did mm -hmm. you actually have? Uh, 18, I believe. Whoa. Do you know what like percentage of your donations came in through those peer to peers or? Yes. Yes. We actually, <laughs> you should see our spreadsheets. Uh, we actually, I love spreadsheets. I'm so excited that you have them. <laughs> we have a backend spreadsheet where each peer to peer was tracked individually with donations addresses, you know, the information of our donors so we could reach out, say thank you, um, you know, recognize what they do for us, but also so that those who were actually doing the peer-to-peers um, could go to just one page and see who donated to them and how many like cookies they need to make or bow ties or uh -huh. um, Christmas decorations, you know, whatever their project was. So we were able to track not only what everybody brought in, but what the main page brought in. Um, so this year, our main page brought in about 13,000, which is a little more than last year. And then the rest of the 33,000 was from our peer to peers. So I would say two thirds of what we uh, raised was through our individual peer to peer campaigns. That is awesome. Um, so did you do your spreadsheets like in Google Sheets so that everybody could see them then? We did. Um, we didn't give everyone editing access because we thought it would be a little chaotic, but everybody was able to, you know, see it, go to their page, and we would update the sheet every day as donations came in. So they in the morning or at night could check their donations and, you know, see what they need to make next or who they need to say, send thank you notes to. This is exciting. I'm taking notes so that way I can like put show notes together for people as, as they're talking about it. I love that you guys started so early because I feel like that's one of the biggest things is kind of asking people and then asking them again, like setting those expectations. So there were there some expectations that you set with your fundraisers like hey, you could be making a lot of cookies or, cause that was one thing that I did have a lot of conversations with people about. They were like, we're gonna get people to make cookies. And I'm like, they could be making a lot. Of <laughs> Do they know that? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we, we told them, I will say the one thing we didn't um, think as much about was that we would get out of state donations for items. And then we would have to cover shipping costs and Charlie. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so we did run into that, which we didn't expect as much, but um, we did try to tell people, you know, pick one thing you want to do because some of our volunteers really wanted to do like two or three different ones. And we said, no, 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 just pick one thing because then if you get 80 orders, you know, you won't be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. We know this is at, you know, at the holidays with families, people are cooking and doing all kinds of other stuff. So we didn't want to put too much work um, on our volunteers that month, but we still wanted them to have fun and be a part of it. And then for like, for the promotion, bringing people to the site, was that something mm -hmm. that you guys took on as an organization or was that something that your volunteers did as well? A little bit of both. Um, I think part of why our peer-to-peers were so successful was that, um, you know, we encouraged all our peer-to-peer volunteers to share on their own pages, to call their friends, to email it to their family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even people who may not know us or follow us on our social channels, they donated to the peer to peers to support their friends and their family and, you know, what they believe in and what they work towards. So I feel like that was a huge part of our success is that we got a lot of donors who 
I'm imagining have not donated to us before because they came in through this process. And did you guys um, equip your volunteers with any like templates or resources or anything like that to promote their peer to peer campaigns or did they kind of just like take the wheel and run with it? We told them that we would help them write social posts if they needed it, but most of ours just, they ran with it. Some, you know, um, put stuff up on Facebook or offered their own incentives. You know, one of our volunteers, she got a, um, a gift card from a local restaurant donated as a sort of like a raffle item to encourage mm -hmm. people to donate to her peer to peer. Um, and some of them, you know, just made phone calls to all their friends and family. So we let people do what was comfortable with them as far as getting people involved and donating to their campaign. So were there things that you did this year that you will do again or things that you did this year that you won't do again? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I think so. We. We had a, some good success with like match days, you know, where we had a family or a business match an amount that we were trying to raise that day. And we really, um, we were focused so much on the peer to peers that we didn't do as much with that this year as we hope. So we're really hoping next year to get more um, like local businesses and other place, other supporters on board with match days because we thought those did really well. Um, and I think we'll do, you know, we're hoping to have the same success next year with peer to peer. So our goal is to get more volunteers involved, you know, streamline the process, make it easier, um, do whatever we can do so that, you know, we keep being more successful every year that we do this. Yeah, the reason that we like introduced peer to peers really is because I want to say three years ago, I called a bunch of big day giving like giving day campaigns or giving week campaigns throughout the country and i was like what does it what works like what is the thing that's really going to bring us to the next level and they all said peer to peer mm -hmm. so um that's why we initially integrated it you know always room to grow right <laughs> are there things that you would do differently like you won't do again like so you're going to focus on the match days also now that mm -hmm. you've got this whole peer-to-peer -peer system in place is there anything that you're like man that really didn't work don't do that um i think the only glitch was maybe not thinking about the the shipping costs for out-of-state um items right. so we would, should probably address that and maybe even put a little budget aside to cover that cost because one thing i wanted to add real quick was the volunteers were absolutely amazing not only did they reach out and make the cookies and uh, make the bow ties and all the different things i mean this all came out of their pocket we did not have a budget to cover the cost of the baking supplies the craft supplies these people all did this on their own i mean they really went above and beyond especially with how successful it was and how many cookies they had to make and how many ornaments they had to make um so that's huge but as far as um if we want to send things out of state i feel like that should be an organizational cost so we'll put a budget together to, to cover that and they had to deliver them too didn't they like mm -hmm. like get them to the people yeah we a lot of our volunteers um were doing just like porch drops like i was making dog treats so um you know i was driving around dropping it on porches if it was outside the columbia area you know, we had um, Melody set up a table at our facility where volunteers could store uh, what they were making when they were done, and then they could arrange the time with whoever donated to come pick it up. Um, so we're going to talk more about that process too next year. You know, do we want a dedicated volunteer who loves to drive to do porch drops? Or yeah. you know, we had a lot of repeat donations, so we had three or four volunteers making different things and all delivering it. You know. Um, so figuring out that process and how we can make it a little easier on volunteers next year would be great too. That's a great idea. Like that whole co-oping system of the delivery mm -hmm. would, cause I'm telling you, there were so many cute things that your volunteers were making. I was like, yeah. I don't even know. Like, I don't even know which one I want. I want them all. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're able to buy them all next year. Them all. They're so cute. I loved them all. You guys did great. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you would give a nonprofit about getting started with peer-to-peers or just 
I mean, you guys really effectively, I feel like you market yourselves well, you're on social media, you're always doing stuff. You're very, I feel like, well, you're in my social feed, so there's that. But is there any advice that you would give to people? Um, I think making it as easy and enjoyable a process for your volunteers as possible because you want them to enjoy it and you want them to do it again the next year. So trying to take as much of the work off their plates so, you know, they just have to think about baking their cookies or, you know, whatever they've volunteered to do for you, um, I think is what we really tried to do this year. And I hope we were successful and I hope we can keep doing that. But I think that's how you keep people involved and you keep growing, you know, that group of volunteers who want to do things for you is make it a fun experience and make it as easy for for them as possible. And I think a huge part of why we were able to do that was that Melody assembled a team of us to do a lot of the back end stuff. So that, you know, that wasn't all on her or all on one other person. And we could sort of Absolutely. split the duties yeah. and make it a little easier for everybody. Yeah, the team was amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. And one thing I can say about volunteers, myself included, is this is a really tech savvy world and we're not all that tech savvy and it's hard to keep up. And some of that aspect of it really scared some people. Um, they just got you know, scared about having to deal with the website and all that behind the scenes stuff that goes into it. So the team took care of all that for them and made it very, very easy. So not scaring them because this is all computer generated and everything it is important um, to have a tech savvy team that can handle that, answer questions, maybe guide them through it a little bit. Cause it can be daunting, mm -hmm. you know, especially with how fast things move. The yeah, I thing, like had a crazy mm -hmm. thought. I'm like, well, if you co-op the delivery, mm -hmm. you could co-op some of the marketing as well if you wanted to and like pair somebody who's maybe not as tech savvy with somebody who's more tech savvy, you know, or, you know, I think that the way that you created a team to do the work was really just awesome. <laughs> I'd say genius. Thank yeah, you. it went really well. <laughs> and they did an incredible job. And um, you know, a couple other things is you have the time and talent page on the website. We really tapped into time and talent. You know, we made sure that the people had time to do what they signed on to do. And I think we were just blown away with how much talent we have within our volunteer group. I mean, painters and crafters and bakers and, you know, all I had to do is get dunked in a dunk tank. That didn't take much time. <laughs> Um, so we like to have fun, you know, I think you can tell by our social media, we're always coming up with good, great ideas and fun ideas, and we, we try to do things um, that are different that everybody else is not doing. And lastly, I don't think you can start too early. Um, our volunteers are already thinking about what they want to do next year because they're so excited that this was so successful this year, that they're hyped to do it again, and they're already brainstorming, truly. Well, and I feel like that's the way it works. Like if you think about Halloween, right? So if you're a Halloween costume person, and I totally am, um, after Halloween, you're like, I could be such and so and so and so. And you have like all these ideas. And then a month before Halloween, if I haven't written it down, and I have like a note in my phone where I write down all the Halloween costumes that everybody suggests. And a month before Halloween, I'm like, hey, what are we going to be? And the whole family is just like, I don't know. And one of my daughters is like, someone dead. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, when you have those moments of clarity, it's important to document them so that way you have them for the next year so you can use them. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, tell everybody where they can find you or contact you. Like if you're willing to feel the question or two, especially about what you do. But then maybe somebody too might want to ask you a question about peer to peer, if that's okay. So tell us where to contact you. I would suggest contacting the team at volunteer at unchainedmelodies.org. They can answer all the questions, um, how they put things together behind the scenes, and um, how any, they did like their search. Volunteers or needs that you have right now? The needs right now, um, you know, we just came off this incredible fundraising campaign in, in many ways, in addition to Como Gives. And so now it's time to buckle down and get back to work. And we're always looking for volunteers, including foster parents. Um, we took in another 
two litters of puppies and uh, our nursery will be full again. So we're always looking for volunteers and foster parents, always, always. And we're just a really fun um, group of volunteers. You know, we're all here for the same reason. We all share the same pa uh, passion for our mission to rescue the abused and neglected dog. And we really just kind of uh, keep our nose to the grindstone and and work away and we just have a, we have a really well-oiled machine as far as our group. Um, we're pretty structured and pretty organized and um, everybody knows their place and we have a great training program. Um, so anybody that wants to get involved is, is welcome. Yeah, definitely check them out on social media friends because there's two ways that I feel like I benefit from your social media. The first one is like the warm, fuzzy feelings that I feel when I get to see all the pictures of the dogs. Like, I love that, especially when you guys are posting pictures of puppies. Ah, Instagram. So right <laughs> yeah. And then I feel like also your training tips and stuff, like this summer, you put up a bunch of videos, like different training examples. Our dog talk videos. Yeah. So yeah. if you need help figuring out how to manage your dogs, you can go out to the Unchained Melodies Facebook group and not, not group, but page and watch the videos. They're do totally free and they're really awesome. So yeah, that's the dog talk. And uh, they're on our, all of them are on our channel, our YouTube channel, Unchained Melodies Dog Rescue YouTube channel. We load them up to that channel after each one is, um, has been viewed on social media. And that's kind of a prelude to the training classes that we offer because as a nonprofit, we're in it to help the dogs. We're not in it for, you know, financial gain. Um, and we offer those training classes to help family members and their dogs, you know, cohabitate better together, especially in the times of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all your time today, ladies. I really appreciate everything that you had to say. And once again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for all you do. Back to you. Thank you. So there you have it. Unchained Melodies Dog Rescue Peer-to-Peer -peer Success Story. They knocked it out of the park. I love how they manage their volunteers. I totally agree with them. You cannot start too early. Remember, for their year-end giving campaign, which started December 1st, they started planning it in July. Okay. If you'd like to catch the show notes for this episode, I have a bulleted list of everything that they talked about over on maycreate.com. And also, please, please, if you are planning something right now in your marketing, like maybe making a marketing plan, hop on into my office hours on Thursdays until February 17th. I have free office hours available to nonprofits and you can hop on a group with me and a few other nonprofits and just listen to what each other has to say, ask questions. It's a really awesome experience because planning your marketing alone is a big fat bucket of suck and nobody wants to do it, but you don't have to. We can do it together, okay? So I will see you at office hours. You can RSVP for a time slot at maycreate.com forward slash office dash hours. And my dog keeps ringing the bell. I got to let her out. So <laughs> until the next episode, you know what to do. Go forth and market with purpose. Okay, Quimby, we're gonna go outside. It's cool.